Well, David Reed, uh, as the paper comes down and uh, with the potential for this guy out there, one of these entrances, they may be hundreds. <laughs> Well, at least he didn't hold up the proceedings with a long extended dance like Nassim Hamed does. <laughs> but, you know, he said this is a dream. You know, he's living a dream right now, fighting in his hometown. First time since he won the gold medal. He's very excited about this situation. And it says on the back of his robe, home. So David Reed uh, does not seem the least bit nervous. Seems very relaxed in there. A relaxed fighter is usually the fighter who is going to win the fight, and we are set to, as Mills Lane says, get it on, let's do so with Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, America presents in association with Glore's Life, presents 10 rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division. This bell is sanctioned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, Commissioner in Attendance, George Boquetto, and Executive Director, Greg Sir. The three judges assigned scoring this bell on a 10 point plus system will be So a look at David Reed as he bows in all four corners of the ring to the crowd, and uh, we have baseball coming up on uh, most of these stations later, and uh, to coin a baseball phrase, the fastballs are gonna be a little bit faster tonight for David Reed, and the curveballs are gonna break a little bit more, and the question is gonna be, can he hit it at this level as well as he can at the others? Well, Simon Brown is a guy who turned pro a long time ago, since 1982, he's been in the ring. Many feel that he's on the backside, and I think that's true, but sometimes these older fighters can really suck it up for one big final effort, and we'll, we'll see tonight if Simon Brown can do just that. And his last fight, of course, was for the middleweight championship. This weight, a little bit more to his liking. He was telling us that uh, middleweights uh, walk around at 170, 175, and... Uh, at this next level down, you're fighting guys that basically are your own size. But when you step up to fight a guy like Bernard Hopkins, you're fighting a guy who is really much bigger than you are. Absolutely. Reed is a, David Reed is a physically bigger man than Simon Brown. I think a real bottom line in this fight, Rich, is going to be the effectiveness of the jab of David Reed and his ability to keep Simon Brown off of him. And not only getting that jab off, but coming in behind that jab. And they've worked very hard on keeping the right hand up. See where David Reed's right hand is? It's been up very high. He's got it up there to the side of his head. They don't want to let Simon Brown unloose that the terrific left hook of his. So they're trying to come in. The strategy tonight is for David Reed to work behind the jab and to keep that right hand up to protect him against Brown's left. Brown is sad. A good left hand from Reed that rocked Brown. A 
Well, Mills, you made a point I thought was good as we were driving over here tonight that uh, a lot of fighters don't grow old gradually. They just get old right now. And uh, even though it's a nice thought to think that you could suck it up one last time, it's not always fact. It's true. Ch I'm Sean O'Grady now we're talking about that. Simon Brown is an old fighter, and he's getting hit. Up, like, underneath he got hit. Good shot downstairs. Combinations coming rapidly, and Brown has to cover up. I don't think Brown is hurt yet, but he's been hit by that right hand of David Reed, and believe me, there's thunder in that right. Ask the Cuban amateur champion, Alfredo Duvergel, about that. It was a fight that, for all intent, was lost. David Reed knew he was lost, and he went out there and whacked him and won the gold medal. He was actually trailing after two rounds of that fight, 16 to 6, and went out there and won the gold medal with that big right hand. And he's displaying it here in the first round against Simon Brown. Brown has been unable to work his way inside, and that is an absolute must if Simon Brown's going to have any chance in this fight. Quick hands from David Reed, in and out. We asked David Reed, what happens if he whacks you? And he had a very simple answer. We're talking about Simon Brown. Yes, well, Brown said, what, what if he hits you with that, uh, we asked him, what if he hits you with that big right? Said, well, I'm going to hit him back. <laughs> and if he hits me twice, I'm going to hit him back twice. So far, however, he's been unable to do that as we wind down toward the end of the first round. And Brown has just been unable to do any business whatsoever. Championship boxing on Saturday. Coming back after this. Round number two, big first round for David Reed, the hometown fighter from Philadelphia and the Olympic champion. Let's look at the numbers in the first round. And that's uh, amazing. He landed almost twice as many punches as he threw. Now that is tough to do. <laughs> they got it turned around, but he wins the, he, he wins the round 10-9, David Reed. Now that's really quick. <laughs> And again, Reed starts the second round uh, as he finished the first. And, and he's just got Simon Brown completely out of sync right now. Brown is a guy who needs to get inside to be effective, has been unable to do that at all. Now, we talked earlier about uh, Shane Mosley and his dad, Jack, who is very much a, a part of his corner and a part of his life. Well, Al Mitchell, uh, not the father of David Reed literally, but certainly the father of David Reed figuratively. And right now, uh, Al Mitchell is with Sean O'Grady. Sean? Al Mitchell, he looks very talented out there. What do you see? Well, he's you, you, this today, he's using a jab a lot more, and he's giving us a lot more body shots. And we told him, Simon was going to look for the right hand, but they've got a good left hook. Why is he using the jab so much? It's important with a guy like Simon, a veteran. Yeah, he's going to come back off of the jab. He's going to come with his double jab and a right hand. And the jab, the double jab and the fake with the jab, a stop the right hand. Do you think the jab is winning this fight? Definitely, definitely. And not only that, it's setting up for everything else yeah. down the line. Yeah. What, Patience, about, what about down the line? Down the line, we, I'm looking for the third or fourth round the way he working to the body. Do you think you're going to turn it up then? I think he's going to pick it up as the rounds go along. All right, we're going to look for that. Hey, guys, uh, they say they're going to turn it up about the third or fourth round. He looks great so far, David Reed. Very effective so far. Thanks, Sean, and thanks to Al Mitchell. Reed doing everything asked of him so far. Did a couple of good body shots a moment ago and uh, just completely dictating the tempo of yep. this fight. But, but let me bring this up right now because somewhere along the line we've got to, and that is the eye of David Reed. The left eye, as you can see, uh, it, he has a droopy eyelid, and he's had surgery on it a couple of times. But it's still there. And listen, this gets back also to Al Mitchell. He says, look, look at, I love this kid. I would never do anything to put him in a dangerous situation. If I thought there was anything really to fear because of that, I, I would not let him fight. I mean, they've been together since David's been 11 years old. We saw Reed there now. Oh, it's a big right hand. It was set up by right hand a moment ago, and it just put Simon Brown right on the seat of his pants. You know, Simon just has not been in this fight at all. Let's see if David Reed tries to jump on him. This is just the second round, remember? And there's still 12 seconds to go. Brown misses, missed a wild left hand. Reed easily got out of the way of it. And Brown back against the ropes. Looked like he was going to go again. Finally spins his way out at the bell. But a big round for David Reed. And blood coming from the nose of Simon Brown. 
The only thing I think that could stop Reed, it would appear, is if he got reckless and very careless in trying to finish him off. You know, talking about that eye, Simon Brown, if he could, throw a left hook underneath and a right hand on the top. All right, David Reed working beautifully from long range. Look at the countering by David Reed, and he doesn't stop when he misses. He continues to throw punches. The combination, beautiful. Okay, here you go. You see Brown coming in. Reed's a shot. It, he, Brown tried to pivot the punch and move away from it, but even when he pivoted, he got nails. Good job by Reed of not stopping the punching. See how Brown thought he was away from it successfully as he pivoted away, but Reed was still punching, and he caught him with the fourth punch of a four-punch combination. Terrific balance by David Reed. You saw him set down on the punch he missed, and he never lost his balance. He kept the leverage on the right hand. He got too much ice out there. That's dangerous. Ice in the ring from the corner of Simon Brown. And Brown has been unable to answer anything that David Reed has shown him. I don't know if Simon will be able to answer here tonight, but I will caution you, at times in his career, he's been in a desperate situation, as we mentioned in our comments a few minutes ago, and he's been able to come back. Most notably, the Vincent Petway fight when he was uh, down several times, Petway down several times. There's a, a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of fight in Simon Brown when he gets into a fight. But so far, he's just been unable to retaliate. He took a left hand again. Cannot get inside at all. 10-8 round for David Reed, absolutely. So Reed with a three-point edge. Now, I like the way Reed is going about his business here, Barry. He's not going crazy. He's still attempting to set up his man. He's still looking for opening. Oh, that was a nice digging Shut left up. hand inside. It by sure Reed. was. It sure was. Those are those little things that you can't even really coach. Why, Simon can't get off. He just cannot get off. And again, Reed, very much like Shane Mosley, showing you the whole package. And he, he appears to be the whole package. And, and Brown seems content to fight Reed's fight, and he just has absolutely no chance of beating him fighting this fight. Well, he's fighting a conventional fight right now, and that's not going to get it done for him. I mean, he can't sit back there and jab, paw away one or two or three times. He needs something to stem the tide and to turn the tide. Good pivot. That right hand by Brown was a little bit short. It didn't yeah. quite get there. Hit the shoulder. He pivoted well. He pivoted. And Simon's beginning to get into the fight here a little bit, though, Barry. It may be getting warmed up to it. Well, he's nothing if not a battler. And he is a guy that if he goes out, he's going to go out on a shield. Last important win for Simon Brown came last year in the summer. He fought Reuben Bell in an elimination fight. He was down in that fight and came back and stopped Reuben Bell. But so far, really not showing an ability to do so against the talented David Reed. We're coming back. We welcome you back. So far, uh, Mills Lane, you've got uh, David Reed pitching a shutout. Yes, sir. In fact, he's pitching a no-hitter. Here are the numbers through three rounds, uh, and you can see uh, David Reed just doing everything right, and Simon Brown really unable to do anything. Low connect percentage, and what he has connected with has not been much. Sean O'Grady, you've been in situations like this. Uh, you have an observation. Yeah, when you get hit and you get hurt, you're out on your feet. It makes you physically tired. Look how droopy both eyes now are Simon Brown's. He is physically tired. It drains you when you get knocked out, even though he's standing up, still throwing punches and fighting back. But he's just behind the step. David Reed is too fast. Too fast and too much of him. The only shot of those that landed was the one to the body. Took a right hand on the way in, did Brown, and it made him miss his own right hand. 
but Brown at least trying to work his way inside now. Yeah, I thought the third round was not quite as one-sided as the first two rounds were, and whether Reed was just stepping back and collecting himself and preparing himself for another barrage, I guess we will find out as the fight evolves here, but I thought Brown at least uh, showed some ability finally in the last minute to get some punches off. But showing no ability to be able to work his way inside. Do you feel, Mills, that that's because of the effectiveness of the jab of Reed, or is he just not trying to get inside? I think Reed just out, 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 out hustling him. I think Reed's a bigger, stronger man. He's out punching, he's out hustling him. Chopping right hand from Reed. One thing I'm impressed with David Reed is his ability to land body punches from outside. He doesn't have to get close to his opponent, Barry, to land good body shots. Now he is working that jab, and it's not a huge jab. There's a right hand off the jab, and down he goes. And that should do it. That was picture perfect. That was a one-punch knockout, Barry, and you will not find a better punch thrown than that. Jab and, that, and a right hand. And not only was there con the concussion of the punch, but I mean Simon Brown's head hit hard on that canvas. And remember earlier, we saw people jumping around on that canvas, and right at that spot that he hit, you remember, it was a very hard spot. Yes. As a matter of fact, Jack Mosley wanted him to change the boards under there about an hour before the fight. You know something, Barry and, and, and Rick, on a, a knockdown like that, you shouldn't even count. You should wave it off and get the mouthpiece. There's no need to count on that. And he was out, of course, before he hit the deck. He was, and it had hit hard. That kid's in real trouble right now. They're, they're working on him, but... It, that was a hell of a shot. Well, there's joy, of course, in the Reed corner, but there's concern over Simon Brown right now because he is down, and they've managed, I believe, to extricate the mouthpiece now. It's that out. They got that out, but he should never count it. Should have waved it off and grabbed the mouthpiece right away. But Simon's head hit so hard on that canvas, and that's when you really have a problem, when you get that double concussion of not only the punch, but the head hitting the canvas as hard as Simon Brown's did, and he was out. Well, I was mean, a, out. A jab and a right hand right behind it. I mean, you can't draw it up better than David Reed did it. We talked about the power of David Reed's right hand. As we take a look at Simon Brown, he's still out. Now he's okay now. They're getting the ammonia. Now. now they're getting it to him, and he's trying to sit up. They will keep him down until they're absolutely certain, though, that... He is all right, and that's uh, something you like to see. Yeah. We talked about the power of the David Reed right hand, which he has flashed not only in the Olympics, but as a pro. Brown was trying to come in. We could not get off, and there you see it. It's just that straight right hand and the terrible smashing of the head on the deck. All right, there you go. He come, he, 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 he. He, now he steps back, now he's on the jab, now the right hand comes right behind it, there, bam, right on the chin. He folds up, he's going right now, and then his head hits, double whammy. Good shot. It was a perfect punch. I mean, you just can't say any more about it than that. He threw it right from the shoulder, everything behind it. David Reed possesses one of the hardest right hands in all of boxing. That was a huge punch, and it was executed perfectly off the jab. They'll get a little oxygen now on Simon Brown, and they get him to a stool. They, will still, they won't let him stand up and walk around yet. They are, of course, are always concerned about swelling and that sort of thing, and uh, they will take every possible precaution. And that's something that you didn't see uh, as recently as five or six years ago. That's true. When they gave him the ammonia, he started to respond. They gave him the oxygen and sit there for a bit. But, you know, Simon Brown, Barry, should seriously think about saying I had a good day, but it's time to go. Well, I think, Mills, you're absolutely right. I mean, he's lost back-to-back -back knockouts now to Bernard Hopkins and this one to David Reed. And I think this probably was, or at least it should be, his swan song. Well, he did say when you can't get away from punches anymore, it's time to uh, get out of the game. And uh, that was certainly the case tonight. Admittedly, he was in there against one of the bright up-and-coming stars in the sport of boxing, but uh, nonetheless, Great win for David Reed and maybe the end of the road for Simon Brown. Right now, back up to the host position in Al Trotwig. Al? All right, Barry, a moment of joy for David Reed. For the first time as a pro, he performs in his hometown, and with quite a performance, he knocks out Simon Brown. And the only way that Simon Brown could stay in this fight because of his experience, and it is experience that often wins out over youth, but when experience becomes age, that's when things get dangerous. 
We'll check on the condition of Simon Brown. We'll have the official announcement of David Reed's victory. He's now 10-0 as a pro. Plus, we'll recap the win by Shane Mosley earlier. Boy, was he impressive. This is FX. Well, we can say this on FX tonight, the debut of boxing here at the Apollo of Temple in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We have seen two outstanding young fighters, Shane Mosley earlier and Dave Reed just moments ago. We will be recapping these fights as we continue through the next few minutes here. We're going to try and get an update on the condition of Simon Brown. Meanwhile, a programming note here on FX. This week on FX Major Movie Sunday, a street gang framed for murder, risking their lives to prove their innocence. The Warriors, tomorrow at 8, 7 central, only on FX Major Movie Sunday. As we continue here live, let's go into the ring, filled with a lot of people, medical personnel and all. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, following the knockdown, referee Frank Cappuccino immediately waved off the 10 count and called a halt to the bout. The official time, two minutes even of round number four. The winner by knockout victory, his record now 10 and 07 KOs. The pride of Philadelphia, the American dream, the undefeated David Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean O'Grady is in the ring. Yeah, what a homecoming, huh? Hey, man, it was, I thought the fight was going to be a little bit tougher, but I was a whole lot faster, a whole lot stronger, and uh, I, I was in tip-top shape for this fight. You, you know, Simon Brown had six times as much experience as you. You showed him no respect. You went right after him, and you destroyed him. Why such a statement? Well, these experienced fighters, you have to show no respect once you get in the ring. You can show outside, but once you get in here, it's all business. And that's what I've done tonight. You certainly did do that. And you took followed instructions well from your corner. Al Mitchell, how do you think David did tonight? I gave him a B plus. B plus? I Why? Between me and you, I thought he could have had him the round before. When he hit him with that combination of right hand, he should have went back. When he came back to the corner, I told him, this time you go get him hurt, go right back, and he's going to come to you. And he did it perfect. Well, I'll tell you, I thought you were tough, David, but Al Mitchell's even tougher. Did he ever hurt you tonight? No, not really. He caught me with a couple of shots, and I saw the veteran in him because he was rolling with a lot of my shots, my right hand. He knew that I was coming in with, but the game plan was to stick with the jab and throw my throw left hooks, and then maybe on down the line, we knew that he was going to start gambling. You certainly did. Al Mitchell says you're ahead of where, where he thought you were. How long before we see you in a title match? Your 11th, your 11th fight, maybe? Well, who knows? It, it's all up to my promoters and uh, my coach, Al Mitchell. And, uh, you, you know, who knows? I'm ready for one now, but my coach, Al Mitchell, you know, he, he want to slow things down. So that's cool. I'm, well, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. There's a man who uh, plays Rock'em Sock'em Robots. This has to be a joy to work with him because he follows your instructions to the T. Where does he go next? Hey, I'm going to give him a look, couple weeks off for rest. Then we sit down together with our promoters and decide who's the next victim. The next victim, that is confidence. Wait for a B-plus fighter, come on. Hey, he got a lot to learn. He's still learning. He only had 10 fights. And hey, now he's in college. Now I got to try to get him a degree, and then so we can go to the master level. Well, he's on his way, and I know he's got the master in his corner. Let's go back up to Al Troutwick. This kid's good. Two good fighters tonight, and you can tell why David Reed is as good and as dedicated as he is because of that tough course he's taken down there in the ring. We'll be back here on FX Championship Boxing Saturday night. We're going to recap the two fights we've seen. A knockout victory for David Reed. A knockout victory for Shane Mosley. And we'll also update the condition of Simon Brown as we continue back at the Apollo of Temple here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Stay with us. This is FX.